What's up, y'all? It's your boy Terrell Lemons, and we on the Second Wind Podcast. Lock in. What's up, Second Wind family? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Second Wind Podcast. I'm Jay Mills, of course, here with the dynamic duo, G.O. Ganging him. He got Ganging little Dewey him. on. Little, you know what I'm saying? I'm little, out little here soap with Dewey the velvet on. joint. You, you know what I'm mean? saying? But thank you for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, comment, you know, show love. Please, we appreciate all the love. Um, but before we get started today, I just want to say thank you to our first ever sponsors, AG1. We really appreciate the sponsorship. It's really big for us. Yes, sir. Like Jarvo said, man, AG1 is our first ever sponsor. Honestly, like... I'm hype about it because AG1 is something that I used to drink before we were even sponsored by them. You know, working with athletes, I see these guys drink it, and I'm like, these guys know the best things for your body. These guys know the right things to put in your body. So when I started drinking it, it was perfect. You know, it made me feel energized for the day, made me feel rejuvenated, made me feel like I was ready for the day, made me feel like before workout I could run through a wall or run through Jarvis. Well, he'll never run through me. <laughs> like, I don't know about none like of that. I got to run through Jarvis, you know. So never I wake that. up, you know, in the morning, put AG1 in my AG1 water bottle, or I like to get a little creative with it, throw it in a smoothie, little strawberry, banana, pineapple, mango action, a whole nine yards. Look at them over there naming all that shit. You know, a AG1 is really the real deal, man. Like, you, you know, it's something that you can, you can use every day, and it's something that it has every single vitamin, every single mineral that you need, 75 vitamins, 75 minerals, and you don't have to wake up in the morning and take a million different products. You know, one scoop, everything you need. It's delivered to me every month, us every month, so it's real simple. Throw it in your water. Um, it's really that simple. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1. AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D along with five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to ag1.com slash second win. Again, that's ag1.com slash second win. Back to the pod. Today, man, we got a great guest on the pod, man, my brother Rel Money, Terrell Edmonds, man. What's up, man? Um, man you know, form, former first-round pick, former Pittsburgh Steeler, Virginia Tech Hokey as well. Mm -hmm. um, you now current Philadelphia Eagle, man. I'm, you know, I'm proud of you, excited for you. But thank you for coming on the pod, man. It means so much. Man, my dog, man. Appreciate y'all for having me. Definitely a great vibe. You already know. Linked up with both of y'all plenty of times. We had some great vibes already. But, man, I'm excited to be here. Yes, sir. Appreciate yeah, you, for brother. for sure, man. Damn, this... What you got going on here? The scenery, right? That's what I'm saying. The scenery, I walked in. Hey, I'm like, that outside vibe, man. Look, outside, catch a little, you know what I mean, walking around and everything, and yeah. we all just out here having a good time. Man. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. This is our first outside episode. Episode, yeah. This we never done outside. It's a little before. vibe. It's a we little, little bougie. Hey, we bougie today. <laughs> a little vibe, whatever. Man, take us through like growing up. Like your household had to have been crazy. You know, two first round draft picks. Mm -hmm. Your brothers in the, was in the league too. Your mom was a superstar athlete, track. you know, yeah. superstar track athlete. Then your dad, two-time Pro Bowler. Like, what was it like in the household growing up? Like, Man, it was competitive. Yeah. Everything was competitive from who can run the fastest. We used to have outside races, the whole family race. My mom, my dad, all my brothers, we line up from light pole to light pole. Yeah. Everybody sprint. My mom used to cheat every time. My dad, he used to get a little five <laughs> yard head start. <laughs> and then we used to all just race, man, you know. But I think that's what really molded us to just be the athletes we are today because we just take that into everything like we used to competing with my brother you used to compete with all your friends back in the day so it's like now that competition stuff it just brings the best out of anyone i think mm -hmm. you got that sweet from your mom huh come on now that, 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 that's See, what you say from mom. papa's wasn't fast yeah, nah pops fast pops, my mom's pops. faster I don't know. Look, you ain't about to set me up like that. Just in case they watch you, you gonna set me mom, up. Mom, mom, pops, on my bad. Hey, nah, you ain't gonna set me up with mom or pops. But nah, they definitely, you know what I mean? It was just competitive. Pop just took the five yard head start because you know he had some years on his body. Yeah, you know how yeah, football yeah, sure, do. For sure. But mom, she was always active and moving. And then you know I used to always wanted to just beat my older brother because he was always bigger, faster, everything. And we couldn't let little bro win. Hell yeah, he, never he, little bro. He, right. Never you that. don't never want him to have them bragging rights. <laughs> but yeah, man, it was always competitional. What's, what was the most like competitive thing in your household that you guys would do? Like whether that's games, Man. that's not athletic. You know what I mean? Whether that's car games, what like what's the most Video game. competitive thing? Like yo, I'm only gonna punch you in the face if I lose. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> like what's the most competitive thing? To this day, I'm gonna say two things. To this day, either spades. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna say three things. Either spades. Connect Four. Connect Four big in my family now. Oh no, I got <laughs> it. Let me look at that. Now come out now. I got it spades, in the back of the car. Connect Four, or just shooting shots. Like we okay. got, it. we used to have a basketball goal. We just shooting, and you just pick a spot. You just shoot till you miss. The trash and then if you miss, 
you trash talking everything. It's yeah. just like right now, you talking about it, the Connect Four. I'll play you after this. Now, oh, we on. We, we, we on, legit now. Don't want that smoke now. <laughs> we can bring that joint down. We might have to we bring it ready. down for the cameras. We have a good time, man. Uh. You the best baller? Best you baller? The best baller? I'm going to say my older brother. For real? Yeah, my older brother. He up. Over a thousand point score, all oh, of that. Yeah, yeah, like, we all was first team all state, but he had over a thousand points, so he really a bucket. Damn yeah. River? Yeah, Dan, Dan River. River. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. That's y'all, that's probably the most athletic people to ever come through Dan River. By far, family wise. Man, like, we had a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pr- probably family wise, but we had a lot of athletes that came out of Danville, really? Virginia. But you know, just probably family wise, you know what I mean? It's hard to, to bet against For it. Sure. <laughs> For sure. I, mean, I, put chip, I put all yeah. my chips in on us, but you know what I mean? Uh, definitely a lot of great athletes that come from our area. It's just like, you know what I mean? We just a smaller area, and we just need more people to come out there just to check us out because sometimes you never know. You might find a diamond in the rough. We found three of us, and Mm -hmm. we got more people that's in college right now that still that made it to the league before they got tryouts and all that, but you never know. Like Sometimes you just need some more uh, exposure, yes, and sir. I think that's the biggest thing that we lack in that area right now. Opportunity. I feel like a big part of like training is having somebody with you. Like, yeah, you, training by yourself is hard, but if you got like people around you training, it's almost like a cheat code. Like, you're gonna go that much harder because you're that much more competitive. But yeah. for y'all, y'all had the super cheat code because you wake up in the morning, <laughs> super cheat code, and it's your, your brother's room to your right, your other brother's room to your left, and it's like, shit, it's yeah. early in the morning, it's competition off rip, you know, like, that, nah. That, that has to be crazy. Nah, you definitely right. I think it's just like what you said, having somebody around you, yeah. it just holds you accountable. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times that's the thing that we lack when we by ourselves. Right. Like when we by ourselves, sometimes you'd be like, all right, I don't got to do this extra rep. Yeah. I don't got to go as hard this time. I just got to make my time. But if you got your brother right there, you got your mans right there working with you, mm-hmm. Oh, I can't let them beat me on this last show. Sure. Yeah. Definitely not. If your time's 17 seconds, you might run 13 just because right. you're trying to be. <laughs> right, right. right. And it's like, you could have ran the 15 and been cool, but that 13 seconds, like, you're really pushing yourself to the furthest, furthest extent. Yeah. And it's like, I think that's just holding you accountable, making sure you go out there and work. The days that you're not really feeling good, he's going to pick you up. The days he's not feeling good, you can be like, yeah, let's get right. Let's Move. go out there and ball. For right. sure. From the outside looking in, from the outside perspective, you know, um, even for someone who's not an athlete, there's three of y'all, yeah. you know. You, Terrell, Trey, and Tremaine. And all three of you guys played at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. Even if one of you guys played at Virginia Tech, I don't like people don't understand how hard that is, but all three of you guys played at Virginia Tech. Crazy. Was that the plan? Like, was it like, you know, going through that process, like, yo, let's all stay together and play together? You know what I'm saying? Because I think one of the coldest clips, I've seen a lot of cool football stuff in my life. The coldest clip I've seen is the three of you guys running down kickoff together. Yeah. That's that competition. That's that sprint. That's crazy. That's that sprint. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Y'all think that's that light pole to light pole sprint. We're yeah, talking yeah. about it. Let's go back to when we was younger. Light pole to light pole sprint. If one of us make this tackle, I'm going to beat you. Right. <laughs> one of us got to make it, but I'm going to beat you down here. For sure. And that's that light pole to light pole sprint. But just going back to Virginia Tech, it was never really in the plan because my parents, they were so open to us just making our own decisions. Mm-hmm. Like once we reached like the – 15, 16, 17 year age is like they gave us the opportunity to make our own decisions and go out there and be, become young men. And I think when my older brother went to Virginia Tech and he chose that and made that decision, um, he was such a role model for me and my younger brother. It's like, I just want to do the same thing my, my older brother did. Yeah. So it was like, boom, he did it. I'm going to do it too. I feel like I can do it just because he showed me the way already. He already showed me the path. He did it. He conquered it, so now it's me to go ahead and step in his footsteps and try to do the same thing. And I think my younger brother, he just fell between both of us. Even though he's bigger, it's just like he just followed everybody, and it's just we kept on going from there. Your pops being your pops and, you know, being a pro bowler and being, like, in the league, did you feel like you guys had to fill those shoes? Or did he ever, you know, push you guys to play ball? Or was it just like, listen, just because I play ball doesn't mean you guys got to, but if we're going to do this, we're going to get right. Like, how was that process in that and family-wise? I think uh, he never really – pushed us to do something that we didn't but it was all always that if we started something we have to finish i think that's the main thing he really uh embedded in us is like once you start something no matter how bad it suck no matter how bad you might be doing you got to finish it and that just teach you like you know what i mean sometimes stuff might not go your way but you got to finish regardless and there's no quitting none of that and he was like man time just you got to go out there and really just put it all out there regardless the outcome you can't be scared to fail pretty mm-hmm. much like you gotta you gotta be more so scared to miss your opportunity than be scared to fail i think that's the biggest thing i feel like a lot of people struggle with that where they're like i don't want to take that chance i don't want to take that risk because what if this happens what if that happens like you can't think about that you got to be like i'm gonna go yeah. do this you know if it doesn't happen at least 
I went and I tried it. You know what I'm saying? It's better to say I went and I failed as opposed to always stay up and thinking, dang, what if I would have did this? What if I would have did that? You know, and I feel like a lot of people got that problem. Like, they struggle with that. Yeah, and I think that's another thing that my mom and dad did. It's just like, I'm such a positive person. I feel like I'm going to win every time I go back. Yeah. If, like, if I go out there and I bet you I'm going to race you, 100% I feel like I'm going to win. The only way I can't win is if I don't try. Yep. The only way I can't win is if I just quit right there. And I'm I'm so much scared to miss that opportunity. Say we got a race for a million dollars. I'm more so scared I'm not going to win that million dollars than go out there and say you're going to just beat me on rip. Right. Like, I feel like if I don't race you and I know I feel like I might win, I'm going to win that million dollars rather than go out there and just <laughs> not race you just because I'm scared that I'm going to lose. Yeah, right. Like, sure. I'd rather go take my chances. And I think that's just something that all of us really thought and what we took into everyday world, like even outside of football, just life every day. And we just taking that like, let's go out there, just take that chance. Go out there, put yourself out there. If it work, it work. But at least you can say you tried, like you said. Fear fear isn't real, man. You know, like I had a football coach that just said like, fear just in the man, it's in, all in your imagination. Everything mm -hmm. on the opposite side of fear is, you know, all your goals and aspirations. And even like you guys, like I, don't, like, I was telling him yesterday, I was like, bro, they got three brothers that play division one football you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and y'all played in the league but the, just to even make it to that point like the dedication and just chasing your dreams like that is by far is scary in itself it can be scary in itself but you guys manifested that yeah like, i think that's the dopest thing i ever seen yeah yeah a lot of prayers man too i can't thank the man above enough uh just you know giving us the opportunity and then just we keep on just stacking on it you know what i mean very humble very just uh driven as a family and you know it's just good people around like you know how we were for sure we was teammates man you know yep always selfless i like to give back i like to talk to everyone on the team i like to just do whatever i can you know what i mean just to be a good person he's my og the, you took me under my wing man, i was with you every you. day man. i'm telling you man it's just the good vibes because that take you further than anything else that take yeah. you further than whatever you want to say it's just like you got to go out there you working hard together but outside of this football stuff I want to know you as a person too. Yeah. Like you, you really my dog at the end of the day. For sure. And it's like, if I'm gonna show love to you, I ain't gonna fake it. So it's just like that's how I felt. Mm -hmm. You know, this show is called Second Win, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like you really in the second win of your career. You know, Pittsburgh doesn't pick up your fifth year option, but now you're on the Eagles, mm -hmm. and you find yourself in a great position where Ooh. you got y'all's team is like a bunch of dogs. You know, and you kind of like I'm here now. You know, I'm ready. What is your mindset going into this year? I really think my mindset this year is just, man, just go out there and prove it to myself yeah. that I'm the type of player that I, I, I claim myself to be. Mm -hmm. I really go out there, just put everything out for everyone that I'm working with every day. Like, you don't got to really ask me for nothing. Like, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to give you everything I got 110% of the time. Yeah. I'm going to go out there and go as hard as I can. I, I'm going to do whatever, whatever you need me to do. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to put everything on the line. And I think that's just the biggest thing. I just want to go out there and prove it to myself. Uh, of course, I had some great years in Pittsburgh. But now I'm an Eagle now. So now it's like, boom, you was a great stiller. So what you going to do for the Eagles? And yeah. it's just like that's my mindset, going in and giving 110% and putting myself on the line again. It's for a sure. breath of fresh air for you? Fresh air. It's a breath, breath of fresh air for fresh you? Air. Like just new start, new, new, new scenery? New start, new scenery, new teammates, uh, just getting adjusted again. And then it's just like, now it's all on me mm -hmm. uh, because all the stuff that the good, the bad, the indifferent that happened in Pittsburgh, none of that matters anymore. Now everything that matters is what happens from today on out. I haven't played a single game. So now from the first game into my last game as an Eagle, this is my new legacy. Now I can build my own legacy however I need to build it. I love that mindset. Yeah, man, for real. Like, it's a lot of people that dwell on the past and, like, you're living in the present. Like, you're, mm -hmm. you're living in now. Like, I'm an Eagle now. You just said I haven't played a game. You played so many games, yeah, but you yeah. saying I haven't played a game as an eagle, and that's your mindset. Like I'm an eagle now. I need to get. I need to get right. Yeah, I'm just trying to live with my feet are. I'm yeah. just trying to live with my feet are. I'm in Philly. We over here in an apartment complex now. Just trying to figure out what's going on. I'm in a whole new area, new team, new teammates, new faces. It's like now, just everything that that happened before. No matter what type of player. I could have been, no matter what type of player I was already, uh, everything that happened, the good, bad, the ugly, is like now, what are you going to do now? Mm -hmm. You can make everything good or you can make everything bad from this moment now. So now it's about me going out, working hard, 
um, studying my film, going out there on the field, making plays. And I just, you know what I mean? You wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here if I didn't have that confidence in myself that I can go out there and do that. For sure. I tell you, that's one thing just from being around you um, and knowing you and being with you. Like, you're just so at peace. Like, mm -hmm. even, you know what I'm saying, when we were playing ball, just like I always, you always felt calm. You know what I'm saying? Always where your feet were. Like, how do you manage that? You know, you know the league, bro, in the world full of chaos. Like, how do you manage that? Even change the scenery. Some people, it's hard for people. Like, how do you stay grounded? Uh, really, when I say stay grounded, a lot of times I think about either one, all the obstacles that I already faced before and I conquered mm. that I thought I couldn't conquer. And then I think about everything I've already been blessed with. Mm. Yeah. So I've been blessed with so much already. And then every hill, because we all went through stuff before. We all been through hills, all tribulations and everything. And we all been to the moment like, I don't know if I can get through this. Yep. But we still here today and we got through it. So now it's like, boom, I got through that. That can't be but so much harder than going to a new team and playing football. At For the end sure. of the day, that's a kid's sport. Yeah. We can look at high school, little league. It's the same game at the end of the day. It's just you putting more stress on yourself to go out there and be perfect, but you've never been perfect. Yeah, I was never perfect to get to the point I am now. I'm never going to be perfect, but I can go out there and put everything I can and go out there and put everything on the line like I've been doing. And shit, hopefully the outcome come out like For I sure. wanted to. And it's like, you know what I mean? That's just my whole mindset with it. And I've been taking that in year in, year out because it's like, it's not going to be perfect, but at the end of the day, if I put everything, all my eggs in the right basket and do everything I'm supposed to do, I feel like the outcome going to be in my favor. No doubt. Always going to be in your damn. favor. Damn. Nah, that, be that answer favor. was crazy, boy. boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, listening like, yo, oh, oh my God. God. He preaching it as nah, joy. That's real, that's <laughs> nah, that's real, real shit, though. That's, that's real, real, man. I appreciate that answer for sure. Nah, I'm going to take that with me when yeah, I'm, man, you know what I mean? Real shit. I'm going to watch that joint and take that joint with me for sure. Like you said, you don't dwell on the past, but just going back to the Pittsburgh days, right, and being a first-round pick, mm -hmm. right, um, and the expectations and the uh, – you know, I wouldn't even say pressure, but just like what people expect and how they want you to play or expect to play. You know, some would say from a fan perspective that like you left more meat on the bone, right? Mm -hmm. Or like maybe he didn't live up to whatever expectations, but it doesn't even matter about their expectations, mm -hmm. about what you think about yourself. How were you able to just, you know, be the player you wanted to be while dealing with like the outside pressures of being a first rounder? Like, do you feel like you left meat on the bone? Like, how'd you feel about that whole situation? I mean, I think every year, uh, I progressed, yeah. and that was my main goal every year. Uh, regardless if I had, I, I'm just throwing out random numbers. If I had 10 tackles my rookie year, mm -hmm. my goal was to have 15 tackles next year, mm. yeah. and I did that. If I had one interception or no interceptions or one PBU, I wanted to have two or four PBUs, and I did that. So it was like every year I felt like I progressed. Um, the numbers, they show it, and I think just – I wouldn't say more meat on the bone. Of course, you always hold yourself to a high standard. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're just constantly chasing greatness. Yeah. And we, you've been with Coach Tomlin. For sure. We constantly chasing greatness. Yep. And it's something that we will never achieve. Ever. But we're constantly chasing it over and over and over again. And we'll never achieve it. And that's just what makes us competitors. That will make us the top 1% of the world because we're constantly chasing something that we'll never get. And you're constantly going to keep on working for something that you can never actually achieve. But at the same time, those small steps that you've taken, you got to love that, 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 that process, I would say. So I'm, I'm enjoying the process, getting to my main goal. That's definitely yeah. something Tom, Coach Tomlin used to preach, like the process and stuff like yeah, that. You, you got to love the process. You got to love the gotcha. process. And that's, I think that's still what I'm in today. Like I, I'm not the exact player I want to be. I'm not, I've been a great player, of course. I've been a good player. But I want to be like, you know what I mean, top of the top. But I'm enjoying this process because as long as I'm taking steps forward, I feel like, boom, just because I want $100 but I made 50 already, I started at zero. So okay. at least I got halfway there. So now I got to keep on grinding until I get to 100. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like you got to enjoy that process because if you're still worried about you only made $50 but you've been looking for 100, come on now. Yeah, yeah. You made 50. Right. You got to see it half full. See the yeah. glass half full. Keep on working. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to get it to 75, and then you're eventually going to get to 100. And now what you going to do when you get to 100? Make that make that jump 150. Right. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah, oh, bro. Real, what you going to do? You're going to keep on adding it up. It's like once you get to that peak, 
Because a lot of people reach their peak and then what? Yeah. You just going to stop working? Right. Like, when y'all y'all want to be the best podcast ever. Number one. When y'all get to number one, what y'all going to do? All right, we made it to number one. Now we're going to stop. Never. You're going to go even harder. Come on, yeah, nah. Never, like, never. Like, that's, I think that's everybody's mindset. Like, you're reaching a goal, but you're constantly chasing something that you'll never technically reach. You can get there, but you just got to keep on grinding because the next person doing the same thing you're doing, and they're looking for the same type of outcome as you. So I think that's, that's and I think And I think, like, you're someone, you know, um, you know, all the people that we've had on the show, you guys are all so similar. It's like getting better. Like, you guys are competing with yourself. I don't think that's what people, yeah. you know, understand about, like, high-level people, whether you're an athlete or not, whether you're a high-level sports reporter, high-level athlete, like, they're constantly competing with themselves to be the best version of themselves. Yeah. And like you said, they're chasing something that you'll never fully have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like you said, I've gotten better I've gotten better every year throughout my five years when you're with the Steelers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all you can ask for. It's mm -hmm. so like I was telling you, it don't matter from the outside perspective. As long as you know I got better, yeah, that's all that, that's all that 100%, matters. Hundred percent, because you can never. I don't think you're ever gonna make everyone accept you anyway. Yeah. If you do a poll out of hundred people, seventy-five percent of the people gonna say one thing, the other twenty-five gonna say something else. Like everybody not gonna be on the same page. We in America at the end of the day. Right. Yeah, everybody not gonna think the same thing. But it's like, as long as you proving to yourself, like you write your own goal. I, I'm a big on writing my own goals and putting that stuff on paper. Visualizing. And put, yeah, visualizing it like that. So once I put it on paper. Once I reach them goals, now I can keep on going. Because I don't even really divvy into all the stuff that other people might say. Because at the end of the day, some of their stuff be unrealistic. I remember my rookie year, I was looking at it. Somebody told me, I want you to have 10 picks, oh, uh, man. 150 tackles. <laughs> they want you to be a Hall of Famer. Some Madden one. shit. What? They want you to be on some Madden some creative player. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm looking at it. I start laughing because I'm like, bro, you said 10 picks, 150 tackles. Who did that? <laughs> Who? Show me. Who did that? Right. And I'm like, that's unrealistic. Like, you just saying stuff just because it sounds good. Mm -hmm. But, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, as long as you feel comfortable in yourself, you just got to keep on grinding and keep on um, pressuring yourself to go to the next level. He's someone uh, we talk a lot. Like he's probably like one of the smartest, like analytical, per like people I know when it comes ah. to like. <laughs> I'm getting. You know, don't worry, I'm gonna yeah. shit on him later. No, I'm playing. <laughs> nah, but, get it right. But like you know, in terms of we talking about football, like scheme matters. Yeah. Oh, like, so much. I, I, he talks about like scheme. Like you could elaborate, but like scheme matters in like like Minka playing with the Dolphins and then going to Pittsburgh. It's two yeah. different schemes. Yeah. yeah. Like he flourished in. Pittsburgh because of the scheme. Yeah. Also, he's a great player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but like the Dolphins. The scheme, it wasn't fitting him. So it could be the same thing for you. Yeah. You no, know, scheme matters. So we're just we used to talk yeah, about it all the yeah. time. I mean, football, I feel like it's so much scheme. Like, obviously, everybody in the NFL is talented, but there's so many different situations where you see guys and it's like, oh, he's not this, he's not that. And then he goes to another team and yeah. he looked crazy and it's like, or he gets a different offensive coordinator, or defensive coordinator, and now it's like, damn, where was this the whole time? It was like the whole time it was there. Yeah. But you just got to, you know, you got to make it, you got to make it shake sometimes with a different, with a different OC or different DC. But yeah, we, we talk about that all the time. Like the NFL is so much scheme for real. Yeah, I think it's just like, they got to play you to your strumps. Hell yeah. yeah. And then at the same time, it's just like, you know, everybody talented. Mm -hmm. You don't make it to the league if you're not talented. Everyone yeah. talented. One thing about it, they do weed that out. Yeah, yeah. If you're not talented, they're going to get you out of there or they're not even going to give you the opportunity. But if you get that opportunity, which a lot of people do, it's like, the best scheme or the best situation, because even if you are nice, but yeah. if you coming in behind, uh, what's a nice, let's say a nice, what's a nice linebacker core right now in the league? Uh, They've been there together for a while. A nice. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, buff, no, no, buff. let's say quarterbacks. Let's say quarterbacks. Uh, you coming in and you you get drafted the first round, but you behind Aaron Rodgers. You can be <laughs> the nicest quarterback ever. That's yeah. just a bad situation for you yeah, right there. Yeah, right? Like, you sure. know you're gonna sit for some time. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, that situation, scheme, all of that goes together hand in hand. Best situation, best scheme, the best fit for you. I think that all goes uh, hand in hand. Before we get back into the podcast, I want to give a big shout out to our first sponsor, AG1. Yes, sir. Like Jarvo said, man, AG1 is our first ever sponsor. Honestly, like I'm hype about it because AG1 is something that I used to drink before we were even sponsored by them, you know, working with athletes, I see these guys drink it. And I'm like, these guys know the best things for your body. These guys know the right things to put in your body. So when I started drinking it, it was perfect, you know, it made me feel energized for the day, it made me feel rejuvenated, it made me feel like I was ready for the day, it made me feel like before work I could run through a wall or 
run through Jarvis. Well, <laughs> he'll never run through me. I don't know about none like, of that. Like, I can run through Jarvis, you know? So never I wake that. up, you know, in the morning, put AG1 in my AG1 water bottle. Or I like to get a little creative with it, throw it in a smoothie, little strawberry, banana, pineapple, mango action, a whole nine yards. Look at him over there naming all that shit. You know, a AG1 is really the real deal, man. Like, you, you know, it's something that you could, you could use every day, and it's something that it has every single vitamin, every single mineral that you need, 75 vitamins, 75 minerals, and you don't have to wake up in the morning and take a million different products. You know, one scoop, everything you need. It's delivered to me every month, us every month, so it's real simple. Throw it in your water. Um, it's really that simple. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D along with five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to ag1.com slash second win. Again, that's ag1.com slash second win. Back to the pod. You know, you on a team now that was a couple plays away Come from yep. being Super Bowl Ooh, champions. You hold know. on, get that jewelry yeah, on. I feel yeah, great. I feel yes, sir. Yeah, you know, you, you part of a defense now that was a historic defense. Like, they mm -hmm. was crazy. And, like, on paper now, y'all still, y'all crazy. Like, yeah. if you... You know, Bradbury, Slay, you got the Kobe Dean. Like, your front is yeah. crazy. Like, Fletcher, Josh Sweat. Like, y'all got Hassan. Like, y'all yeah, got, got a crazy thing. Y'all drafted all dogs. them dogs from crazy. Georgia. Like, what's the what's the energy in the locker room and, like, in the building? Is it like, this year we, we need to get it done type of thing? Or is it just, yeah. like, kind of chill? This is is really, like, this year we need to get it done. Uh, because it was, like, they don't show a lot of clips from last year's game like Super Bowl game, mm -hmm. but it's like they bring it up in like small spurts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they like, we're not going to talk about it a lot because y'all know what we're trying to do again. Right. But at the same time, the way that their offense is set up with Jalen and you got uh, D. Smith, you got A.J., you got uh, we just now got Swift in, too. Ah, we got damn. a bunch of, and we already got some heads that been there. He, he Eagles fan. He, yeah, yeah, we, got a whole, we got a whole lot of people that already been there. And then it's like, you got their old line, you got Kelsey, all them boys. Man. Come on now. It's like they already got a solidified offense and a solidified defense. And then just coming apart. For me, when I'm coming apart, I'm like, boom, I gotta hold my weight. Yeah. Like they already got everything set in. They already got their routines. They already know each other. I just gotta come in, hold my weight, and go out there and give them everything they need. Yeah. And it's just like, man, I'm excited. Uh, because every day in the locker room, People only talk about going to win that trophy for this year. Yeah. Like, there's no talking about we just need to win a season. There's no mm -hmm. talking about we got to win the uh, division. The main goal is let's win that championship. And everything that we do from this day to camp to the season is going to help us win. And I think that's just what we've really been doing these last few weeks from the few weeks I've been here. So I think for you it's kind of interesting, you know, like I said, playing from two different championship contending teams, you're also around some very good players. Mm -hmm. Obviously, around Big Ben, uh, Big Ben, Ben Roethlisberger, Hall of Fame quarterback, and Jalen Hurts. Like, what's something you know, some similarities that you've seen between the two? You know, you're a defense, but you know, you went against both of them in practice already. Mm -hmm. You played against Big Ben all the time. Like, what are some similarities between the two? I think the biggest thing is that they're both competitors. Um, say what you want about Big Ben. I have mad respect for Big Ben. Big Ben, he was a true competitor. He wasn't scared to make that big throw. He wasn't scared to fail. Again, he wasn't scared to fail. Like, he would throw that big pass and give the wide receiver a chance. And he had A.B. I was there with A.B. And A.B. made that 95% of the time. He was with A.B. He was crazy. That's what I'm saying. He was crazy. Like, he was in my rookie year. So, yeah. it's like he threw the ball up to A.B. Sometimes it's just a throwing up ball, 50-50. A.B. going to come down with it. And he... Trust the AB like that. And then Jalen the same way up in practice. Like he trusts AJ. He trusts Devontae. He trusts all them boys in the receiving call. Like, and he's not scared to go ahead, tuck it in, get you a nice 30 yard or 20 yard run. Mm -hmm. And it's like that competitive aspect from your quarterback. And you can see that he's gonna put it all out there and not scared to get hit from a safety or a linebacker to get that extra yard or two. I think that's the biggest thing. What do you think? Because uh, I read a lot, you know, read a lot just from like the media and stuff. Like he seems like a real attention to detail type of guy, like real meticulous. Like is that something that you see as well? Like going against him? I think so. Uh, just because every day he tries to to work on something new, and it's like he talks about it sometimes when he's breaking down a huddle, and like sometimes he like really tries to eye control uh, mm -hmm. with the safeties. So say we're in our half field backpedal or whatever, we're in our half field backpedal. 
he'll try to steer you to the middle of the field. But the whole time, he know he's throwing that whole shot. Throwing the whole so thing. them two steps or three steps off of the numbers, that one or two steps, that's determined if you're going to pick the ball, if you're going to get a PBU, or the receiver going to catch it. Even if a catch and tackle, that's 15, 20 yards. Yeah. That's explosive. That's a win. That's a, win. Inches, that's a win. It's a game of inches. This much, half step. That's a win. <laughs> that's a win. Yeah, and his crazy. eyes is doing all of that just because you got to move with his eyes as a safety. So it's like, I think he, he definitely, you know what I mean? He growing. Big Ben, he had plenty more years on him. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, Jalen, like, he's smart as I don't know what. And he like a competitor. He a dog. And I'm excited, man, because we played against them last year. You know, they beat us. They, they whooped us last year. But <laughs> I'm excited this year to be on the team and, like, you know what I mean, actually play some games with them outside yeah, of practice. That's fire, man. You know, uh, we've been sitting here talking football, football, football. But you rap a little bit, too, Come on, now. Come on, yeah, now. You rap Come a little. Like, you're not just the, the yeah, football player. Something, a little man. something. We ride, we ride. Like, I'm bumping that joint. Like, how do you feel when you're in the booth, man? Like, it's, it's different than, than football. I feel free. Mm. Yeah. I feel free, stress-free, mental is fully clear. Whatever I want to talk about, I can talk about, and nobody can tell me no. Yeah. And I think that's what I like about being in the studio. Like, I can turn, I like, when every time I'm in the studio, I don't want no red light on, I don't want no blue light. Mm-hmm. I don't want no lights on. I want it to be pitch black, me in the microphone, just like this. I can close my eyes. I can say whatever. I can listen to the beat 10 times as I want. Just tell them, start it back, start it back. Yeah. And then, boom. Say whatever come to mind, and then sure. at the end of the day, it all come together, and it's like, dang, it's like I'm painting the picture. Mm-hmm. I painted the whole picture. The song sound good. My man, y'all out there rocking to it. Come on, I told you we was out there practicing. Hey, I know he proud of me. I was cranking that dude on the way here. Hey, like, he was cranking. Like, cranking. They rocking to it. I'm like, oh yeah, they rocking with it. <laughs> and I'm in here. I don't even remember no lyrics. Yeah. I don't be remembering no lyrics because I come off the top. I don't ever write it or nothing. So I walk in the studio. I leave my phone out there most of the time on the dresser. I walk in there and I'm just listening. I right, play it back. And then I start going. And Chico already started. Chico started. My <laughs> yeah. dog Chico. Hey, Chico started. I Shout know you're proud of me. Yeah. And then we yeah. start vibing. And then, so just let me eat. Yeah. Since a dog, and I came up yeah. on the yeah. street. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, just let me eat. Since a drip. Since a jet, I grabbed that ball. It took me out them streets. Yeah, man, come on, man. We was just up we in there vibing, vibed up, yeah. good time, and we just had a good time together, man. Like it, I think it brings everybody together too, because say we all in there stressing about the same play that we all messed up on. Yeah, man, let's hit the studio. Right. Everybody get on the beat. I don't care if you don't, you've if never rapped before. Rap. <laughs> Go in there, just say something. You can say two lines and then say I'm done. <laughs> but then when you hear it, you gonna play it ten times in your car. You like them too. Like, this shit actually right. sounds all right. <laughs> That's how we be sounding. I suck. Nah, I, I can spit though. Don't, no, don't play no, with me. Now he can get on a freestyle, man. Now he can spit. Why you doing it? Why you lying? Why you had to do it at the word? Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> who? Who? Uh, I'm not saying who, but um, when did you realize that you could rap or, you know, music, that's what really inspired you and that's what you really like to do outside of football? Like, that's something that you were passionate out, mm-hmm. passionate outside of the game of football? I think in college. So in college, I mean, I can say it now because I already, I'm graduated and all. But in college, so I had, I was um, a finance and communications. I was a dual major. So communications, you know, you got to go to the studio. You got to talk on the microphone and stuff. So when I was going to the studio and I had to do, like, my voiceovers, I'm in there doing it. And then I looked on YouTube. I learned how to put the beat on there. Mm. <laughs> so I got the beat playing. And I'm like, it's the slow beat. Like, I'm doing the newscast or whatever, the slow beat, whatever. And I'm just talking over it. So then I picked up a fast, like, hip-hop beat, instrumental. And then I start rapping. I'm like, oh, I can do it the same way. Yeah. yeah. So then I did that. I played it for my teammates, and then we used, the booth used to be smaller than what we sitting in right now, but we used to be 15 deep, <laughs> like shoulder to shoulder, college college yeah, teammates. Yeah, college. And then we didn't know how to stop and start. I didn't know how to stop and start. So we pressed start. Everybody had their stuff on their phone. If you mess up, everybody got to start over. So <laughs> say all five of us got to go. If one person mess up, all five people got to do their thing perfect. Oh, man. Damn. That's before we knew how to stop. Yeah, start. Stop, stop, start. Yeah. <laughs> Once we learned how to stop, start, you know, it was easy. But we used to do that, and I think that just, it kept on growing. We used to do that every day up in college. And then I got to the league. I found a spot in Pittsburgh. I used to do it. My Shout out my dog, Justin. And then we just kept on going with it. And it's like, now I'll put some stuff out there. Took that leap again. It's like, boom, the worst they can say is that I suck. Yeah. Like, I'd rather them 
say I'm one person might say I'm hard. It's gonna give me motivation to keep on going. For sure. Oh, yeah. so, like two, three people told me my first song was kind of tough, so I kept on dropping more music. And you gotta be your biggest fan in anything you do what? first. I you, felt great. Hell yeah. I felt great when I dropped the song. I'm like, I'm over there telling my brothers and everybody. I'm like, I just now dropped the track. Send it to everybody, y'all know. I know my joint hard. <laughs> hard. <laughs> what? I, if I could do anything else, that's why I say if I wasn't an athlete, play football. That's like being a artist, like making music, cause like that is a vibe. Like you said, like everyone could connect to music. Yeah. I think that's the dopest thing. Like it's thousands universal. of people. Yeah, it's yeah. universal. Thousands of people show up to hear what you thought in your mind in the booth when yeah. you were just by yourself, and they love it. I think Get that's a vibe. fire. Yeah, that's a fire vibe. So being in um, you know Philadelphia now. What are some differences or similarities between here and Pittsburgh? You know, now that you're here, you're getting cozy, you're getting your feet wet, you know, you're here. Um, what are some similarities or some differences that you see? Uh, similarities, I would say that both cities love their sports teams. Yeah. So everybody in Pittsburgh, you either a Pirates fan, you love the, uh, the Penguins, or you love the Steelers. And Philly is the same thing. You love the Phillies. Um, I haven't been to a hockey game. What's their hockey team called? But everybody always talk about it. I haven't been to the hockey game. What, for what, Philly? Oh, they love the Eagles. Who? Flyers? The, the Flyers? Flyers? They love yeah. the Flyers. They love the Phillies. And they love um, the Eagles. The Eagles. Yeah. So it's like, you know, both cities. But at, at the same time, we in Philly. I mean, we in Pennsylvania. So it's like, I guess that's just how Pennsylvania roll. Yeah. But I think that's the similarities. The difference... I don't know. Philly just way more bigger than yeah. uh, Pittsburgh. F Pittsburgh was small. Yeah, Pittsburgh small. Philly huge. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know. They both tough. They both tough you cities. You have a cheesesteak yet? Yeah, I had a cheesesteak. I went to, uh, what's the spot I went to? Angelo's. Overrated or underrated? Perfect. Oh, good. Perfect. 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 Okay. Perfect. Okay. Like, you know the cheek. <laughs> Angelo's tough. He from Philly. Our camera guy's from Philly. And what's he, another joke? That's the one with the pizza, here. right? Okay, okay. I thought Angelo was the one. With I know the Max has got one. Actually, I might hit a little cheese. There's a little cheesesteak spot right down the street. Actually, what's the junk called? I, yeah, I you forgot. Drive by and passed it, but uh, nah, they definitely, they definitely got some fire food here. If you had to um, describe your life, my life, in one word or one phrase, what would it be and why? If I had to describe my life in one word, I'm gonna say sensational, just yeah. like future. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Sensational. Why sensational? Man, I'm living the, I think I'm living the best life ever. I'm doing the best job in America. I say it every day in the facility. All my teammates from the Eagles and Steelers can say it. I say it every day. I feel like we, we, we got the best job in America. We wake up to play a kid's game every day. Yeah. And all you got to do is wake up and come out here and run full speed. It's my job. Love that. Love it. And then, you know what I mean? I got good people around me. I got a good family. I got great relationships, everything like that from everybody. It's just like, you know what I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it. A great family, great mom, great dad, brothers. You know what I mean? I just feel like I'm living the life and just keep on building from it. Of course, you know, we all got goals. We all got stuff we want to reach. But at the same time, you got to embrace where you at too. So it's like I'm embracing that but also reaching for something else. And the people that's around me, they pushing me so much to go ahead and take that next level because they see that I still got a, a burst that's coming. Yeah, Like they know I already reached something, but they know I'm about to burst into a whole other atmosphere. And I feel like, boom, I can't let them down the same way I can't let myself down. Mm -hmm. what's, a, what's a goal for you that you haven't achieved or want to achieve that you're chasing? A goal? Man, that's a great question. It don't even got to be football. Football. Yeah, it could be yeah, life. I'm trying to think yeah. about anything. It could be in life. Anything it could be wherever. Life, bro. You know, flip that. Where's some of your short term? My short term goals. Um, well, more. we're going to go back to football because that's what we're doing now. So for football, you know what I mean? Just keep on stacking my years. Mm -hmm. I think uh, write down everything that happened last year, everything that I want to build on. And I just have a, a better year than last year. Not saying my last year was bad because I felt like last year was great. It's just like continue to stack those stats and and you can't take two steps back to try to take three steps forward like i want to take four steps forward and that be it mm -hmm. off of the where i just not came from last year so constantly just growing in the football world and then you know what i mean just constantly stay connected with all my people that I, I i truly love and care for i think that's a big thing because now that we older now people starting to leave more left and right mm -hmm. and it's like stay connected stay 
solid to the people I know. That's a goal. And I think too. that's a that's a big thing for me. Uh because we all busy, but we yeah. not that busy. Right. Facts, man. Everybody that we hit up to get on the podcast, yeah, y'all we busy. Are busy. Y'all ain't we that got, busy. Y'all not that busy. We ain't that busy. Like we we got we can make time for people that, you know what I mean, that we care for and we can really cherish those moments because when those moments gone, you gonna wish you had them again. Yeah, one thousand sure. percent. That's a great answer because I I realized that too. Like life is so fast paced and mm-hmm. we doing so much. It's like you gotta make sure you make time for your people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you know life is unpredictable. You never know. Tomorrow's never not know. promised. So it's like that's that's a huge, huge, huge thing that I like. I just realized it recently. Like I was talking to my little my family group chat about it. Like yo, we gotta make time for each other because you know what I'm saying. Tomorrow yeah. ain't promised for real. I'm telling you, like, even in my family group chat, since you're talking about group chats, we always big on good morning, good nights. Mm. Yeah, it's important. I I landed, I did this, I did that, I'm going here. It's just like the smart things. You don't got to talk for years. You don't got to talk for five minutes. You don't got to talk for two minutes. It's just like, boom, yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Like, when you leave from the club, like, what? You remember we used to do it in Pittsburgh. Once you leave, if we all go somewhere together, we all going to leave together. Or if you go by yourself, boom. Texas is as check, soon as you check get in. there. Check yeah, in. Yeah, check yeah. in. You straight, yep. everybody going to text you. You straight the same time in the group chat. <laughs> yep. Like, oh, where he go? He ain't get home Yeah, He ain't text you yet. Like, you straight. It's just like people don't cherish that because when it's gone, sure, you're going to be like, man, all I had to do was text him. He could, he might have needed me right now. Yeah, you know what I mean? For sure. But for, for you, how do you, you know, have that mentality? Because I just felt like, you know, even for me personally speaking, so many people can be caught up in, you know, football, 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 and they forget the blessings that you already got and how far you came, you know, and to cherish the things that you got. Like you say, and being present. Like how how do you manage to do that all the time? Is that something that you've always been doing? Is that something that was instilled in you? I mean, I think it, it goes back to me and my brothers. Like me and my brothers, like we talk about football, but when football season over, we talk about everything else but football. Like, we can talk about all the stuff that happened, the good, the bad, the ugly. But it's like, we'll let other people talk about that. We'll let other people try to compare us. Like, even when we was coming out, people used to try to compare, like, who's the best brother? That's the number one question. Even, like, when y'all talking about who the best basketball brother, mm-hmm. that's the number one question in football. But at the end of the day, shoot, he played a different position to me, okay. and he played a different position to me. He might be the best at his position. He might be the best at his position. I might be the best at my position. So who really the best? Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or who can really, like, you know what I mean? We all pushing each other. We all working together. And I think that's where we always kept our feet level-headed because we like to – you can lose it in an instance. And I've seen people lose it in an instance from being boastful, from being cocky. Not saying that you're not um, proud of yourself. It's more so that, all right, you don't got to talk about yourself full time. Yes, you can be like, yeah, I did this. I conquered this goal. But you ain't got to put it in somebody's face. You know what right, I mean? At the end of the sure. day, everybody grinding, everybody working. So just because they don't reach their goal don't mean that, like, you got to, you know what I mean, talk down on their name either. For sure. For yeah, real. for sure, man. On this show, man, you know, it's called Second Wind. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's about people. You know, catching the second wind in life, bouncing back from adversity, and just like your story is just amazing. But for the people watching this, um, what advice would you give to the people watching this um, that are listening and you know hear your story? Maybe want to play in the league, maybe want to be the next you, but you know it could be any advice. What advice would you give the people that are watching? Man, my advice would be just keep working. Uh, it's always, it always sounds crazy until you make it happen. I think the biggest, like everything, sounds crazy. If you want to go out there, if you want to make that song, if you're an athlete, you want to make that song, make that song. If you're an athlete, you want to be the best corner. You telling your people you're the best corner before you even get to college. Mm-hmm. Be that best corner that you can be. Be that best person. Be the best there. Whatever you want to be, and don't let nobody take that from you. Don't let nobody. Don't let nobody take your mental. Don't let nobody take your your pride. None of that. Just because you never know what you can achieve. But if you tell yourself in your mind, or you let somebody put it in your mind that you can't do it then you already took a loss. Like, if you already can tell yourself over and over, regardless of what anybody say, that you're going to be the best at this and I can do this and I'm going to conquer this, you already beat 95% of the people because a lot of people are scared to take that chance just because they're worried about what somebody else thinks. That's we, real. Because we say it all the time. You can be wrong 100 times. You write that one time, what? you, you write booming. that one time, you good. You Ooh. booming. And it's just like consistently. You, you need gotta, one person. That's it. You need <laughs> one song. You need one big play. You need one 
fire uh, podcast stream. You need one thing. <laughs> no, for All real. it is, bro. One, one. one thing take can one take you yes. to the, You can deal a hundred times before. None of them work. But that one time, booming. Over so, with. So it's like, keep on going. You never know which one is going to be the one. For sure. For real, man. You just can't. You got to keep faith and not, you not never be scared to fail. Like you yeah, said, you not be scared be to scared fail. Because the one time that you're scared to fail and you don't do it, that could have been your one time. That, that could have been the time. That could be the one time. You could have busted them over the top of the head. For real. For sure, man. For real, man. But, but real, man, I, I can't thank you enough for hopping on the podcast, definitely. man. For real. Um, Definitely one of the most inspira- Like I said, just your family in general, man. Just inspirational people, bro. Just like being around you, your aura. Man, I love you, brother. Got a lot of love for you. But like I said, I just appreciate you spending some time with us, getting to chop it up with you, dropping some wisdom on the pod. But you want to go back to a long term goal? You you thought about it yet? Nah, man. Is I ain't yeah, think about it. We gonna get 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 it. Now, but there's something for you to think about for sure. Definitely. Yeah, um, but for real. second win family. Thank you so much for, you know, tuning in. Please, like I said, like, subscribe, comment, share, tell repost. Tell your auntie, tell, tell your grandma, your dog, tell, tell your, your cat, pet fish, <laughs> all tell everybody, man. tell your mailman. Yeah, no it's me um, and Jarro, we on here, already, man. man. Be on the lookout, man, for, you know, Rail and the Eagles this year, man. Rail gonna do his thing this year, man, yes, for real, sir. man. We got Rail Evans on this joint. Yes, we live. Second win sure. family, we out.